Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today I wanted to talk to you about using Reason for live shows. Now, I know I've done two videos in the past. One was kind of an intro to using Reason for a live show. The second one was showing how you could use one device to control multiple MIDI devices in Reason so you could have 16 instruments set up in Reason and control them all from a physical controller. Well, this time I'm going to show you how to map multiple controllers so you can control multiple instruments simultaneously in Reason. Now, why would you want to do this, you might think? Well, if you're doing a live production, like say, for example, at a church, or you're in a band or whatever where you're going to actually be playing the instruments you can have a multi-tier keyboard stand and have three keyboards if you want to and each of those can control a different sound or a combinator with multiple sounds going across it in reason in that way you can have all these sounds at your fingertips just by changing the midi channel on the keyboard it's a very handy way to do a live show but in order to do that you do need to do some setup and I'm going to show you how to do that. This was a request from one of my subscribers. So that's why I'm doing this video. If you are a subscriber and you have a topic you'd like me to cover, please hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. And I'd be glad to try to put together a video to accommodate you also. If you're not a subscriber, it's not too late. I'm still accepting subscribers. Just click down below and subscribe to the channel, <laughs> like the video, I'd appreciate it. And uh, it would help out greatly in my production of making more videos, more you know, subscribers kind of make it possible for me to do more videos because the more people who like them, the more I feel like doing them and the more people who benefit from them, the better I feel about uh, contributing, you know? Let's get into Reason and I'll show you what's going on. All right, here we go. All right, so here we are in Reason. Now, as you can see, I'm in a plain old blank non-existent kind of uh, project here nothing's going on uh, you'll also notice that down in the lower right hand corner here um, I have managed to uh, get an overlay so you can see my my uh, keyboard here I've got my Akai and I've got a circuit uh, tracks up here that I'm using for a second controller now you'll notice that uh, when I play my keys this little green trigger here is going off you see it doing its thing? All right. That means that there is a MIDI signal being sent in here. So now if I go ahead and add a couple instruments, we're just going to use the ID8 because uh, it's just a simple instrument. It's not really in the way. And I can quickly change and select some basic uh, sounds here. Okay. Let's drop some synths in here. Boom. One more for the heck of it. All right, so we're going to leave the first one as a piano. The second one, I'm going to make a guitar. Third one, I'm going to make strings. And this last one, I'm going to make brass. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'm going to go right through these, and we're just going to click and pick some synthesizers. All right, so now that I've got the instrument set up, you can see that I've got four different instruments here. I've got a piano, a guitar, strings, and brass. Now, if I wanted to play these right now, I could change instruments and play each one. Kind of a pain, and it requires a mouse, so it's kind of bothersome if I'm trying to do a live show. What we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go to Edit, Preferences, which actually on Mac is File and Preferences, Windows is Edit and Preferences. But we go in here and we can see that I have both my synthesizers hooked up here. And you can see them showing as uh, usable down here in this easy MIDI inputs right down here. You know, that's just oh, these things I can play from. I can play from other ones too if I turn them on. But what I actually want to do right now is I want to turn them off. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want this to play anything when I um, when I play my keyboards. Also, I'm going to click this separated right here. Okay. Now, why don't I want them to play anything? Because I want to be able to control which of them is sent where. You can't do that from here because this is just a general everything goes to whatever synthesizer you have active. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go over here to sync, and you'll see this right under here, external control. You have bus A, B, C, and D. And you'll notice all of them say no MIDI input. If I take one of these and turn it on, 
Let's go, we'll put the MIDI uh, plus right here. Now what you'll see is that, let's open this up right here, the hardware interface. If we go to advanced MIDI, you'll notice that we have this name showing here, the MPK Mini Plus. And you'll see channel one is what I'm playing on. As I'm playing, it's it's blinking here, the little light, but it's not still not making any sound. The reason it's not making any sound now is because we need to tell it what sound we want it to play on channel one. You do that by clicking this little drop down arrow. Okay. So if I go and tell it that channel one is the piano, be sure when you do this, by the way, you don't accidentally choose the mix channel. Those That doesn't do anything for you here. And there we go. I picked the piano. And now I'm going to go right over here to channel two. And I'm going to put the guitar there. Now you'll notice all I'm hearing is piano. What I need to do to play the guitar is I need to go over to my controller. And I need to tell it to change its channel to 2. The reason we're doing it that way is because in a live scenario, you can set your keyboard to change channels and change instruments, and that will allow you the ability to have access to multiple instruments real quick, just changing one little setting, and you can set your whole setup that way, so channel 1 on every instrument might be for one song, channel two might be for another song. It depends what you, how you want to set up. There's a lot of options there, but basically it lets you use virtual instruments off of reason through your hardware keyboard and have them easily selectable. Now that's fine, we've got one channel, but what, if, what about this guy here? Nothing's still happening with this keyboard, right? Well, the reason nothing's happening there is because we didn't assign it to anything and we need to assign it instruments. So let's go back again to preferences. Again, it's under edit on Windows and file on Mac preferences. Here we go. We're going to pick number two right here and I'm going to go right down here to circuit tracks. That's my circuit tracks. Let's go to B right there. So now if I go over here and I pick channel three, drop it down and pick brass. And now if I pick channel four, you still hear nothing, but now I'm going to assign something to channel four. We're going to put the strings on channel four. Okay. Boom. There's strings. Now the really cool part is that I can actually, I can actually play both of these at the same time. It's going to change my scale to uh, chromatic over here. So now, if I go over here and I... We have two different instruments. If I change the channel... Get the idea? It's pretty cool. Also, I mean, you can have four interfaced devices to reason, and off those devices, you could have other devices hooked on and using other channels and feeding them through. So theoretically, you could have a drum machine, you could have play bass, you could play everything, and uh, right there, just use them the way you would normally use them like a real instrument. The other thing that's kind of cool is that if you've got a device like the circuit tracks, you can actually use your reason as another instrument and and uh, control it from circuit tracks. So like if I go to circuit tracks on uh, the instrument right here, just MIDI channel, uh, the first MIDI channel here, here we go, boom. The, sequ the uh, sequencer on there is now playing that instrument. So I can actually use this to create tracks in in par, as part of my uh, 
like well, Dallas or sort of Dallas, you know, productions. I could use circuit tracks with its synthesizers plus synthesizers from Reason as additional hardware synthesizers hooked up to it, which is pretty awesome. Um, so basically, yeah, it's pretty cool what you can do with this setup. Now, the one thing you're going to want to know here, and one of my subscribers asked was, how do you record with this setup? This is where the kind of sort of bad news comes in. You can't record these uh, these devices uh, because what ends up happening here is none of these devices, because we turned off that transmission part right here, because we turned off this part where I have this turned off right here and down here, that is what would let you record having that active because it returns to the point where it's see the problem here is that it's playing the instrument but it's You see what's happening? It's recording the channel, but it's playing whatever instrument we assigned in the uh, the advanced MIDI section up here as well. So, I mean, I guess technically you could record with it that way if you wanted to. It's kind of your call there if you want to, if you're all right with hearing multiple instruments playing at the same time and it's not going to bother you too much when you're recording, that's fine. But other than that, there's no real way to uh record just the instrument you got to turn i mean you just kind of have to uh turn it off over here and by doing that it it just chokes basically the whole thing out So, unfortunately, that is one of the deficiencies right there. Um, one other thing is that if you do want to go back to recording, which you probably do after you're done with your show, what you need to do is put this back to standard here, go inside and turn your devices back on like we just did there, and then basically you just need to undo your changes. So, if I just go over here, go to settings and or preferences under edit again, like like four, sorry, I was already there and I accidentally exited. And now we just turn these off. And now all these are back to normal. I can go through and pick the instrument uh, just like before. And now I can record again. So that's kind of the whole thing there. Um, but uh, yeah, so let me know what you thought of that video. And don't forget to, to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And let me know what you thought of it in the comments. If you have any questions, hit me up. I'm happy to answer anything uh, that I can. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you all. And seeing you all in the next video. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.